I think in the age of social media, a lot of students and a lot of um, people my age will turn more to social media. A lot of the politicians have Twitter accounts and Instagram accounts. Political campaigns today have social media and they use social media very frequently. Different politicians have Twitter accounts that either they run or somebody runs for them. And that's a way that they can communicate directly with people who follow them on Twitter or follow them on Facebook without going through the filter of a formal media outlet. Well, the origins or the roots of um, the use of social media and political campaigns really goes all the way back to 2004, specifically the Howard Dean campaign for the Democratic nomination. Howard Dean was an unsuccessful candidate, but he, he really attracted a lot of attention for his at the time, very innovative use of social media. It hadn't really been done before uh, the 2004 election. There have been little smatterings of it. Uh, the McCain campaign had done a few minor things in 2000. I'd always sort of had this feeling that uh, if you could connect up enough people on the internet, that they could out maneuver and out fundraise the big donor people. And no one had done anything like that uh, for that politics. So we, we kind of invented a lot of that stuff, and it worked. As voters are providing a huge amount of data uh, through their use of social media that can, campaigns can use for targeting. So from a campaign perspective, it's really been very good. It really enables them to sort of very precisely target voters or people who still need to register or you know, undecided voters and things like that. Social media's use within campaigns was first successful in Obama's 2008 campaign where he was able to use Joe Trippi's strategies of connecting large amounts of voters through the internet. If a new hot movie has come out this weekend and four of your friends tell you, uh, send you an email saying they went to the hot new movie and it was the worst thing they ever saw, don't waste your money, don't go to it, it's the worst. Okay, it no longer matters how many millions of dollars the movie studio is spending on television telling you it will be the greatest movie you ever saw. There's no matter how much money they spend on all those exciting pictures and the trailer that they're running in the TV ad, you're not going to go. And the reason you're not going to go is because you trust your peers and your peers, three or four of them, told you it sucked and you're not going to waste your money. By the way, they've also told you there's a really good movie. This is what its name is. You may not have heard of it because it doesn't have a lot of advertising, but it's really great. you got to see it. And that movie will win your movie dollar. That's why these sort of long-shot candidates have a better chance now that we're in the so social media age. You know, people can spread the message for them that they lack the dollars to do it. It is definitely the case, and there's like pretty good research actually showing this, that when people rely on social media for news, they tend to only see news that they agree with, right? It's like, the reasons for that are very straightforward. We are friends with people who are like us, right? And people who are similar to us are gonna share news and information that we agree with, right? That's why we're friends with them, because we like them and we share common interests and opinions. So, when we're thinking about the news you see on social media, you're only seeing stuff that you want to see. One of the worries with the growth of social media is the bias that comes from only seeing news related to your views. An informal Twitter poll showed that 55% of people following the 2016 presidential election learned about their candidates mostly through social media. I think the bias comes from people not being informed enough, um, not reading newspapers, not looking at the campaign websites and just sort of like going on what other people say. A study by the Pew Research Center reports that 61% of millennials received their news from Facebook and 37% from local TV. This statistic is reversed for the baby boomer generation, which brings about the discussion of whether or not social media will completely replace television-based campaigning in the next generation to come. So I don't think that we should think about it necessarily as replacing. I think that, you know, when we think about media convergence, we think about you know, convergence, like rivers converge, right? We think about how different platforms are really coming together in online spaces. So, you know, I don't think it makes sense to say um, us as like Facebook going to replace the New York Times, right? The New York Times, the institution and the collection of news uh, will still be around. It might change form, right? It might look different um, and it might feel different when we consume it. But 
it's still there and it hasn't been replaced. Newspapers, for example, haven't been replaced. They're just kind of evolving into new forms. I think it's all about how newspapers and, and other established media outlets will react. I don't know if Twitter will overtake, say, formal newspapers. My hope is it doesn't because I think newspapers still serve a valuable purpose. Twitter is limited to 140 characters per tweet. Newspapers, online publications can do greater in-depth articles that cover topics in more detail and I think are more informative than a 140 character tweet. I'll typically read a news article first um, and then like see on social media, except during the debates when I'm like on Twitter, like following what everybody's saying about it. Yeah, my mom doesn't have a Twitter account and, that, and so that generation, which actually tends to be more politically engaged is in terms of the voting process, is in getting these social media. This is definitely geared toward a younger generation, people my age, people your age, who are just starting, maybe haven't voted yet, haven't had the opportunity yet. And so I think there is going to be a definite divide in how people, say, over the age of 50 or 60, digest and get information from candidates than people in their 20s and 30s. If you're 18 to 30, you're much more uh, focused on your mobile device and are getting the bulk of your information not from television but through social media. So, you know, that, but that generation gets older every year. And in other words, you know, the 70 year, you know, 